Welcome back to Advice with Prince. Welcome back. Today's guest, he's a writer, producer, and director. He's been doing it for over 50 years. Please welcome my mentor, Robert Douglas. Mr. Douglas, how you doing today? I'm good. Prince, how are you? I'm great. So great, great. Before, we, before we started, I asked you how long have you been in entertainment, and you said, and you said about fifty-four years. Well, I graduated from high school fifty-four years ago, and I uh, went to college, and um, I majored in theater, and I started in you know, a play that very first semester. So I've been performing and doing theater and dance and. Uh, modeling and uh, a little bit of everything over the last 52 years. Mm, okay. So, so what you see like college kind of help you get into your craft? Oh, absolutely. That's what I went through for. Um, I wasn't what I wanted to major in and I just happened to uh, find myself in what they call back then it was speech and drama. And um, that was theater. And I uh, auditioned for the first play. I got a very small, small part. Not, well, had two lines, two lines in it. And, uh, and from that point on, I've been bitten by the theater book. So I've performed in all kind of ways, all manner of, of uh, uh, genres uh, over, the, over my lifetime. Oh wow! And you and you've done such great work over over the past years. Um, uh, you you were a producer for a while. Uh, yes. How is producing difficult? <laughs> <laughs> producing is difficult because you you're responsible, and particularly when you find yourself as the writer, uh, director, and the producer. Yeah. Uh, if I uh, had my choice in a lot of the situations, I would have just been the director. Um, what it did was allow me an opportunity to get some of my original work out. And I, I uh, had some uh, producers, I did work with a couple of producers over the years to get some of my work done. Um, I moved to Michigan 40 years ago, and uh, I was working in higher education, and I came to work at Oakland University, and uh, I started writing plays. Uh, I had written a, a one-act play uh, before I moved here and sent it to a, a drama conference in one second place, and I was told that if I had been there at the conference myself, it would have won first place. So I was encouraged by that. But when I moved here to work at Oakland University, I was working with um, uh, African-American kids um, uh, at a predominantly white institution. And the institution didn't have a lot to offer in terms of cultural experiences for African-American kids. And so we did a program, of, um, a talent show. And uh, I co coordinated the talent show and uh, and I thought it went very well. And then the next year, during the month of February, I was all ready to coordinate a, uh, another talent show. And it had I had my themes and everything all lined up. And they told me they didn't want me to uh, to direct the talent show because uh, I wouldn't let everybody be in it. Uh, uh, so. They, uh, they told me I, I didn't have to do it. And so I decided to take the themes I had in my head and write a play. And so I wrote a play. They did the talent show and I did the play. What I would do is each, each, for each February, I'd write a new play. And there were some very, very talented young people on the, uh, on the campus, uh, particularly musicians and singers. Uh, there were some great singers on campus. Uh, um, Foxanne Jordan, Byron Cage, uh, uh, Adam Jackson, Jackson, 
I mean, that was ex uh, extremely uh, uh, bar uh, 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 Byron's brother, Ivan, was a dancer, and his sister uh, was a singer. And so we did, there was so much talent, and there was some young musicians, Chris Knight, Byron Johnson, uh, Galen McKinney, and uh, the violinist, Regina Carter. And so, yeah, that, uh, there was so much talent and they were all involved in my first few plays and I would write a play each year and then Chris Knight primarily would write the music. And so that, that's where it all started. And I've been doing it ever since. And I would send my scripts back to one of my professors at, at Tennessee State University is where I graduated from. And he would uh, help me uh, critique my scripts and help me get them better over the years. Yeah. You, so you mentioned some big names like Brian Cage and some other people. Um, you, 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 you work with a lot of people, um, me and, and, and a lot of people who have gone on to do some really big stuff. I know Kieran, Cedon, the old right. um, Yeah. So how did how did you feel to to be a mentor to people who have such great careers? Because of, it's because a, it's, a, it's a rewarding feeling. I I feel great about it to know that uh, at some point in time I had an opportunity to work with them, and that was uh, that actually. I had that opportunity at Tennessee State and in Nashville. Uh, even before I moved here, I worked with some people who went on to, to do some good things in um, uh, in entertainment and theater. Um, and and uh, also had the opportunity before I moved here to work with some some really great people, uh, well known entertainers. Um, uh, before I moved here and, and and settled down into education. Uh, I used to perform with uh, Bobby Jones uh, on the Nashville Gospel Show, and through working with Bobby, I had an opportunity to uh, to meet uh, Maya Angelou and to go to California and perform out there uh, with uh, Bobby Jones and uh, uh, doing a program for Maya, and then. Uh, through that same association, I was able to uh, work with, uh, to, do, to do an extra in a movie called Sister, Sister, with Diane Carroll and Rosalind Cash and Dick Anthony Williams and uh, uh, Paul Winfield. And so I had some really rich, good experiences. Okay, so you said that you got here about, about four years ago. So, 1980, I moved to Michigan in 1980. Where were you born? I was born in Nashville. Nashville. I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. Born, raised, and educated. So how how did that kind of help 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 your creativity coming from Tennessee? Okay, so it it was really kind of a I had a, like a really rich childhood. We weren't rich or wealthy or anything like that. We I just happened to grow up in a community that was rich in culture. Um, I grew up doing segregation, so everything that we had in our community was black, and um, uh, we we lived in a black community, and all of us lived together. There was a lot of culture all around. You can find in a lot of my plays uh, characters I grew up with in my neighborhood, like One Arm Jesse, and uh, some of the characters that I've written in my plays. Um, just growing up around so much uh, black culture uh, in one little area. Just, I mean, not a, not even a, a, a five square mile area, not even a three square mile area. I mean, right in that little area where I grew up, mm -hmm. all these colleges and and my high school was real well known, and so for black high school and uh, I did. Uh, uh, I was in the choir in high school, and by being in the choir, I was able to do a couple of musicals, uh, Calamity Jane and uh, what was the other? A Carousel. 
Carousel, oh. Yeah, so we did Carousel and Calamity Jane when I was in high school. And that, that piqued my interest in, in theater, and that's why I made it in theater when I went to Tennessee State. Okay. So, so then, like, there, um, you taught me how to direct. What is, what is, like, the biggest secret to a good director? Um, there, I, 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 two things in my book. Uh, knowing the basic fundamentals, knowing uh, stage direction and technique, uh, knowing about lighting, knowing about uh, sound, knowing uh, the stage positions. So basically knowing the basic fundamentals, what you're supposed to do on the stage and how you're supposed to do it. Because you, when you look at a stage, you're looking at a box. Uh, a frame so everything that you're creating on that stage is a picture and so the, the, the key to being a good director is making sure that the picture that you create for the audience is is correct and entertaining and done in a way um, that the audience will see every picture that you're trying to portray and enjoy it and the second thing is allowing the actors uh, to uh, become the characters. What is, what is like your favorite part of the process? I like, I like the lights. I like to do my own lights. Yes, you do. And and uh, uh, I like turning my product once I finish with it over to the stage manager. And then I'm sitting in the back on the lights, enjoying watching the audience enjoy my work. You created a camp for young, yes. for young kids. Yes. And, and I was a part of that camp. So talk, yes, were. talk about that. Oh, the camps were a joy uh, for me. That was uh, an opportunity to, to work with you and other young people. Um, to ignite that theater fire in some young people. I've always enjoyed that. Uh, I, I've, I've been impressed in following your career and watching uh, you grow and become a writer and director and producer. And uh, I'm so proud of you. So the camp and there are others, uh, most significantly Jabri Weber, yeah. who, is, who is doing film now. And doing some really good things, acting and producing, uh, and writing herself. And so, you two are my pride and joy. And so, Camp just gave, gave me an opportunity to work with young people, to pass that that fire that uh, that I found in high school on to young people such as yourself. Yeah. So, so what can you advice? What you give to somebody who wants to get into show business? Okay, so first, know yourself. Is this something that you want to dedicate yourself to? Uh, the one thing that show business requires that I don't think a lot of people even think about. Uh, they just may think about acting and and get, uh, uh, learning how to act and and maybe even trying their hand at writing and singing and dancing. But all of that, the singing, the dancing, the writing, the acting, most importantly, uh, requires a great deal of energy. Mm -hmm. And unless you can find within yourself that energy to, to, to carry it to the stage uh, and, and, and before an audience. You just can't walk on stage and do. The amount of energy it takes just to open your mouth and start to perform. My advice would be, if that's what you truly, truly want to do, know that you have the energy to do it. And 
bring that energy every time. Of course, you need to learn the basics, always learn the basics of acting, learn the basics of theater, learn the basics of, of, of film. Uh, those things are, are, are absolutely, for me, fundamental. The fundamentals, knowing the fundamentals, knowing the basics, bringing the energy. When COVID kind of calms down, how do you think theater will come back? I think theater will come back strong. I think people realize how much they miss theater, how much theater is a, a part of our American culture. Um, from Broadway to the college campus, to high school musicals and high school plays, uh, to camps. Uh, theater is, is an integral part of American culture, uh, all aspects of American culture, whether it's all ethnic groups. I mean, theater is, is art, and art is, is significant for our growth as creative thinkers and critical thinkers as well. So theater will come back strong. Uh, there's a market for it. And I think that market will be even bigger when uh, we're allowed to return to stage because people are just hungry to do something. I'm tired of being in the house. So I, yeah, I, can't, I can't with myself. And, yeah, with. and, uh, and also I know you, you, you got your COVID vaccine shots. So how are you feeling? I got, the first, I got the first one. First one? And uh, it was no problem. I got it in my arm up here, my uh, left side, and uh, it didn't bother me at all. So, the, the, one, the one question that I ask all my guests is four, four things that, every, that everyone should know. What are four things that, every, that everyone needs to know? Well, I've already said one. And that is know yourself. Know yourself. Know yourself. Know yourself better than anyone else. Uh, and, and and be able to um, and respect this number two. Be able to express yourself. Be able to tell people who you are, why you are who you are. And to just be able to express yourself, not only who you are, but be able to, to talk to people about anything. And just to express yourself, be able to communicate. So one would be able to know yourself. Two would be able to communicate. Uh, three, have empathy and compassion for each other, for fellow, for your fellow man. Um, and for your spiritual being. Love God. Mm -hmm. and family. Love God. <laughs> family and that spirituality. Family is, is a part of your spirituality. Family is a part of of who you are when you know yourself. Family is a part of being able to communicate. Uh, family is a part of de uh, developing and growing in empathy and compassion and having feeling and caring about people. Show people that you care and they will, ca will care for you. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so, so, so we gotta go, here we go. Um, you wrote a book. Sam, well, really, it was a play first, but then you turn it into a book. Yes. The Life, the life of Sam Cook. Right. Uh, it was called uh, The Life of Sam, Tri Triumphs and Tragedies of Sam Cook. How, how, can they, how can they go get that book? They can get that book on Amazon.com or Kindle, along with Grandma Rogers' Neighborhood, mm -hmm. Family Love, and a, a TV script, a movie script that I wrote uh, uh, entitled Ossie and Sweet, A Stand for Justice, which is about a, a, a black doctor here in Detroit who bought a home on the east side in an all white neighborhood in 1925. And uh, um, 
when he moved into the home, the, the white residents in the neighborhood surrounded his house with a mob and threw rocks and bricks and, bricks and bottles and things at his house uh, the first two nights. And on the second night, uh, someone on the inside of the house fired out into mob and one person was killed and another wounded. And, uh, and so I wrote a, a movie script uh, about that, that story, that event. Uh, and I printed it, and it's so you can buy that script on Amazon as well, Amazon.com or Kindle. Well, thank you so much. Like I said, go to Amazon and buy all of his plays. Uh, it was an honor to talk to you. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for teaching people some, some, some things about theater and life in general. Then you guys don't, don't, don't forget to like, comment, share, and just to subscribe. And we'll see you next week. Everyone has a path they must choose. For Kai, it's true love or the life she's always known. Lies. Deceit, money, and murder. Against the Grain by Kimberly Kiss. Would you go against the grain? Passion, romance, sex, sin, pain, and death. Love unexpected. When you think you know your partner, think again.